It's a joyful day to have rain come down, Lord. Now let your grace come down like the rain drench us, Lord. Fill our cups till they overflow. We trust you, Lord, that when you pour out, the flow never stops. That even when the cup is emptied out, Lord, it still continues to flow up with your grace and glory. You never stop being generous toward us. So teach us to be generous towards you, generous with our lives, generous with our resources, generous with everything. Because in your economy, Lord, the more we give, the more we offer, the greater our lives become. And we pray especially these days for the concerns we've named, but there's so many more. You know more than we do. You are greater than we are. So we trust now, Lord, that you are the answer for every life, every hope, every grief, every tear, and every laugh we find. So guide us this hour of worship and uplift our hearts and minds to give you praise, honor, and glory. This is our prayer in your mighty and powerful name, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. <clears throat> this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
So my dear friends, don't get thrown off course. Every desirable and beneficial gift comes out from heaven. The gifts are rivers of light cascading down from the Father of light. There is nothing deceitful in God. No two faces. Nothing fickle. He brought us to life using the true word, showing us all as the crown of all his creatures. Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord. Our hearts are filled with you. We trust you, Lord. So come now and have your own way. You are the potter and we are your clay. Amen. Last Sunday, after lunch, we went to see uh, little Lucas, just born into the world, I think at 1.30 a.m. that morning. And I'm always amazed at just how little we are when we come into the world. I mean, we are little, small, humble. I forget that that's most likely how God sees us all the years of our life. It occurred to me when I looked at little Lucas, if he is lucky, he may get 80 to 90 Christmases, 80 to 90 Thanksgivings. When you look at life that way, it doesn't sound like an awful lot. Because every year knocks off one more. I've had 57 Christmases. And now I'm starting to wonder how many more do I have left. But there's something about a newborn baby that is just amazing. We don't perceive they have fear. They simply trust that when they cry out, somebody's going to change the diet. When they cry out, somebody's going to supply some food. When they cry out, somebody's going to hold them, pick them up, rock them, burp them, do whatever you got to do to have that child find comfort. When we are fresh and new in the world, there is no reason to be afraid because all we know to do is cry out. And somehow, our cries are answered. I wonder if that's how God sees us. Even now, no matter how many Christmases or Thanksgivings we have behind us, I wonder if God continues to see us as that fresh new baby. For us, 80 years or 90 years is a whole lot of living. But you've got to remember that in God's time, that's nothing at all. When you consider that the earth itself may be as old as 15 billion years, 80 years is nothing compared to that. 80 years is maybe the second cry of a child just born. So we are encouraged to trust God that no matter how we cry out, no matter what's going on, our God knows how to give us food. Our God knows how to change our diapers. Our God knows how to burn us. Our God knows how to hold us. Our God knows how to comfort us. So maybe that's why James' words are so important this morning. There is a thing called testing in life. But the testing that we receive from heaven on high is not a test to prove something to somebody. Y'all know that, right? Read your Bible. God does not bring a test to somebody's life so they can prove to somebody else that they're somebody. Any test that comes from heaven is to show us who we really are. It's to reveal something in us so we can understand what God is doing in us. And testing is different from temptation because God tempts nobody. Temptation is 
a lure to be pulled from one thing to another thing. Temptation is a lure to be pulled from good health to bad health because of smoking, overeating, overindulging in this, driving recklessly, using drugs, all kinds of things. These are temptations. And these temptations come to us because something inside of us forgets how to trust God. We get hooked into things. The things we get hooked into slowly start to move us away from God and trusting in God as we start to trust in our own devices. Temptation are inordinate desires. They are desires that are out of order. They are desires that are out of whack. They are desires that don't know how to find God for satisfaction. So the smoker goes to nicotine had that sense of calm in their life. The overeater goes to food that had that sense of satisfaction. The liar tells lies because they're afraid the truth may show something they're not yet made in the face. The speeder keeps on speeding because he or she doesn't know how to manage their time to get there safely. I'm stepping on somebody now. The clothes house puts on fancy clothes to look good because they don't trust. They're already made you. Inordinate desires are born of a mistrust of God trying to make of ourselves something that is out of line with what God has already done in us and for us. And so James says, why waste your time saying God is tempting me? Why would God tempt you to leave God? Does that make sense? Why would God want you to walk away from God, turn away from God? God is not saying, you got to prove yourself to me. Now think about that. God is not telling us we got to prove ourselves to God. You know why? Because God already knows us. God already knows all about us. God knows what we're capable of. God knows the gifts that are in us. God knows all about our talents. God knows about the strength that may be in us. Being us, we truly use that strength. God knows about our faith. God knows about everything. God knows our secrets. God knows our hopes. God knows it all. We're not here to prove anything to God because God We're here to remember what it's like to be a small child. To have simple trust that God will supply all of our needs. And we need nothing artificial to try to replace God. There is nothing that we can create that is greater than God. At best, our creations reveal the glory of God because our creative ability is a gift from God. So the things we create should somehow turn back and say, this is how good God is. And because God is good, look what God inspired me to make. Look what God inspired me to create. I give praise and glory and all honor to God because God is within me. And God flows through me. And God has not forgotten about me. And when you start seeing it that way, it becomes easy to kind of follow God's ways. What does God require of us? That we love one another. Just as we love God. Don't waste your time being upset, being angry, holding grudges. Don't waste your time looking for what is bad and awful and wrong. Do what God does. See each other as a little child. Crying out for nourishment, crying out to be made whole, crying out for comfort. Sometimes even crying out to be cleaned up. Because that's who we are. No matter how old we get, we're never really independent. It is an illusion to say that we grow to be independent. We are always dependent upon one another. 
You think you earn your money all by yourself? On a practical level, the salary you earn, you earn because somebody else bought something. And somebody bought something made by you or by somebody else. And that way, your money is really somebody else's money that they gave up for a little while. The money in your pocket ain't your money. You possess it for a little while to give to somebody else. Because you don't give it to somebody else, the money in your pocket does you no good. So we're all borrowers of our monies. We don't even own it. It has no value unless we share it. And once we share it and trade for something else, the cycle starts all over again. I have to have more of it so I can train more of it to keep my life going. So I trust that even when the money runs out, that God will somehow still make a way for me to get what I need to live life. Because like a child crying out, I trust that God is on my side. That God is with me. That God hears me. So we don't turn to artificial things. We don't desire and let our desires get out of control to have more and more and more money. We don't let our desires get out of control to eat more and more and more food that's not for our health. We don't let our desires get out of control to drink more and more alcohol to get ourselves in a stupor so we can forget who we are for a little while. If you want to be out of this world for a little while, go to God and pray. Prayer will get you higher than marijuana ever could. Prayer will locate you in a new reality so that when you come down from that new reality, you don't even have a headache. Your tongue ain't all swollen up and you ain't dehydrated. You don't feel sick, but you feel refreshed and renewed. You feel like somebody who's been made whole. God puts us in an altered state to remind us of who we are. So when we come back to this state, we're ready to serve God all over again. And that's what prayer does for us. It reminds us. Was that something I said? Oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he tells me. I am his own. That's God. That's God. That's the joy of waking up in the morning and trusting in that same God.
trust me. And even if you can't understand that, even if it makes no sense to you right now, trust me. If I put the sun in the sky <coughs> and cause the moon to shine by night, if I put the seas in their place yes. and created every living thing, trust me. You may not see it right now, but I'm holding it for you. Trust me. You may be scared right now, but you take one step in faith, I'm stepping with you. Trust me. And when you cry out, mm. I will answer. When you're hungry, mm. food's going to be supplied somehow, some way. Mm. If you're naked, I'm going to put some clothes on your body through somebody. Mm. If you're lost, mm. I'm going to send somebody to walk with you till you find your way home again. Mm. And if you're lonely, I'm going to send somebody just to sit with you mm. until you see me. Until you know me, and you realize I've never let you go. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how this God tells me. I, we, us are God's own. Amen.